This here is Herika. She's a fully functional and a companion in Skyrim. Hello, Herika. How are you? Oh, you know, same old, same old. Just trying to survive in this crazy world of dragons and bandits. But hey, keeping you entertained with my jokes and sarcastic comments is always a highlight of my day. So, what's the plan for today? Saving the world or just picking pockets? So, if you click this video, this is the more advanced installation guide for the Erica mod. What do I mean by advanced? First up is that we're going to be running our own large language models on our own computer. This means everything is secure, private, and you can also run some more explicit models. It also means it's a bit harder to set up because you have to have the technical know-how to configure them correctly and in general just trying to get all of these offline AI pieces working in harmony can require a little bit of work. And secondly, it has a pretty large hardware requirement. If you're already playing Skyrim heavily modded, you're using up a lot of your computer resources. On top of that, these AI resources use up a lot of GPU and a lot of RAM. Frankly, I wouldn't really recommend trying to do this unless you have at least 32 gigabytes of RAM and at least a graphics card in the range of an RTX 3070. Frankly, NVIDIA graphics cards work better for AI generation. If you don't meet the requirements, and don't worry, the beginner installation guide is still just as good for getting Herica up and running. These AI services are still relatively new technology, and this is a very difficult thing to just get set up, so don't fret about it. However, if you are wanting to set this up in the more advanced configuration, then keep on watching. For the AI text generation, we're going to be using Cobalt CPP and plugging in a 7 billion parameter model. For the speech to text, we are going to be using Local Whisper, which is pretty much already set up in the Drama Distro, just requires a few configurations. And finally, for the text to speech, we are going to be using Mimic Free, which is already pre installed in the Drama Distro, zero setup required. We are going to be skipping over the image to text generation for this video. You can use a Llama CCP server running Lava. But just for simplicity's sake, we're going to skip here as it's not really required for core functionality. And also because this is a more advanced installation guide, just like the beginner guide, we are going to assume that yeah, you already know the basics of Skyrim modding, once again for the sake of brevity. Just take a minute of your time to briefly explain of how the mod actually works. What we're doing is setting up a Windows subsystem for Linux virtual machine within your Windows installation. With here, reinstall the Drema distro, which is a Linux virtual machine, which has all the AI services required to make the mod actually run. The mod for Skyrim will extract data from Skyrim and send it over to our Herica server, which then saves all the data and does all of the AI generation and management. It will then reach out to different AI services. There's a whole heap you can pick from to actually generate AI responses, AI text, to translate your speech into text, and to also translate images into text as well. We then package up all of these responses and then send them back into Skyrim where Herica will respond to you in a rather intelligent manner. There's a lot going on here, but I can assure you we have done our best to make this installation process as simple as possible, so you don't have to be an AI wizard to get this installed. Anyway, without further ado, let's get Harika, the ChatGPT companion, within your Skyrim. First up, we need to install Cobalt CPP, so go to the Lost Ruins Cobalt CPP GitHub repository, go to releases, and download the latest exe file. Then just save it somewhere important, like your desktop. Now we need to download a large language model from Hugging Face. To give you a very quick one on one of what we're actually doing here, these large language models are the code for the AI generation to allow Haraka to actually speak and give intelligent responses. The recommended model size for most consumer hardware is 7B, or 7 billion parameters. This could run on most decent to high end GPU. So, once again, if you're playing heavily modded Skyrim, you're going to be fighting for that GPU space. 
If you have a more powerful graphics card, you can attempt to run a 13 billion parameter model, which makes AI a bit more smarter. Anything above 13 billion parameters is really going to require dedicated hardware to run properly. Anyway, we're going to be downloading Symphia 7B version 1.5. This is a pretty decent model. There's probably better ones out, yeah, and especially if you're watching this video in the future, as these models are changing quite rapidly in quality. Click File and Versions. Now we have a lot of options here for downloads. To put it simply, the Q stands for quantization, which pretty much means how powerful the model is. This will require a little bit of experimentation for you to find the best fit for your hardware, but a good rule of thumb are Q4 and Q5 models are the best ones to go with. We are going to be downloading Q5KM. With both Cobalt and uh, Symphia LLM downloaded, you're going to want to start Cobalt CPP. Open up the presets menu and you got a few options here. To put it simply, if you're using a NVIDIA GPU, you want to use CU Blast. If you're using an AMD GPU, you want to use CL Blast. Frankly, the AI generation is more powerful and faster on NVIDIA GPUs. So if you're using the AMD one, it may be a little bit slow for Herica to give a response. If you click Hardware and then GPU Layers, you're going to want to enter in 35. GPU Layers is basically how much power it's going to use out of your GPU. For 7 billion parameter models, they can go up to 35 GPU layers, and then for 13 B parameter models, they can use up to 43 GPU layers. Then go back to click launch, and then click the browse button for the model, and then select the Symphia 7B model. Now you have everything set up. Just as a note, you can get much more advanced and technical with how you want to set up your offline AI generation. This is just a very basic, quick, dirty setup for just getting this working. I highly recommend going and playing around with this to get the best optimization for your hardware. Anyway, click the launch button, a command menu should appear where it will start running the LLM, and then a web browser menu should appear for Cobalt CPP. You want to keep the command menu running, especially when we start Skyrim, because we need it running in the background for the AI generation to take effect. The next thing you need to do is install WSL. So go to your control panel, program and features, and click turn Windows feature on or off. Then the menu appears, scroll down to the bottom, and you need to make sure that Windows subsystem for Linux and Virtual Machine Platform are enabled. Once they are enabled, you will need to restart your computer. Once your computer has been restarted, you're going to need to open up command prompt as an admin and simply enter WSL space dash dash update. This will update your WSL to the latest version and it's also a good way to check that you actually have it installed. With WSL installed, we can now start setting up the Drama distro. Head over to the mod page, go to files, and download the demo distro file. It is quite big, so it will take a little bit to download. You're just going to have to be patient, unless you have Nexus Premium. After you have it downloaded, you're going to want to unpack it somewhere pretty important. In this case, I'm putting it within the Herica server folder on my desktop, in clear eyesight of the VEC. It will take a little bit to unpack as we're unpacking a 3GB file into roughly over 10GB, so just please be patient. Once everything is unpacked, you're going to want to run the install.bat file. It will pop open a command prompt and it will take a little bit for this installation to go through. Just be patient. Next, open up the tools folder and run the update.bat file. This will update the Herica server to the latest version. You're going to be prompted to enter in a password. The password is simply Dremor or lowercase. You can verify if your Dremor distro is fully updated by just running the update.bat file again. And if it says it's all up to date, then you're all up to date. Now we need to actually enable local RISPA. So go to tools and run the enable local .bat file. A menu should appear. I'd actually recommend reading through this yourself, but in this installation video, we're going to enter yes, and we're going to install the 
large speech to text language model because we have the power to do so. With local Risper now turned on, we can now start the Haraka server. So click the run.bat script and wait for the Haraka server to set up. Eventually, a web browser menu should appear of the actual Haraka server URI. And what we need to do is initialize a Haraka server. So click server actions and then reinitialize Haraka server and click OK. Now we need to actually configure Haraka to actually work. So click configuration and then configuration wizard. Now there's a whole lot of options here to get Haraka running and to play around with, but we're gonna use some bare basic configuration just to get the mod running. The main thing at the top is to change your player name to your in-game character name and change the prompt head and Haraka personality text boxes to include your character name. You can also spend some time here to customize Haraka's personality. You can get quite creative with it. Configuring Cobalt CPP to work with a Haraka server is a little bit more complicated just due to how WSL networking works. You need to open up a command prompt, type in ipconfig and find your local IP address for your computer and then copy and paste the IP address into the connector cobalt CPP URL text box. If you click the check button, you can check if you entered it incorrectly and then change the connector cobalt CPP template to Cynthia. For the text to speech service, so you're gonna to wanna to change the function to mimic free and then scroll on down to the mimic free configuration. You actually don't need to do any configuration to get this working. But if you're curious, if you copy paste the URL into your web browser, you'll get presented with the Mimic Free URI. From here, you can actually play around with all the different voices available and then use that to configure your in game Haraka voice. For speech to text service, you just need to change the speech to text function to local Risper. And you don't have to do any configuration for the local Risper as it's already enabled, but you can just click the check button to verify that it's running. Another optional but highly recommended setting is the long-term memory function. This basically enables a Chroma DB database for vectorization of Haraka's memories, so she has somewhat of a long-term understanding of your adventures. It's very complicated, but you can just click true to enable it. And then under the two URLs within this menu, we just need to copy and paste the URLs present within the command render for the Haraka server. You can also click the check buttons to make sure that you have entered in the correct URLs. We have everything configured. You can scroll down to the bottom and click the check button. If you see an error about connect to OpenAI, don't worry about it. We're not using OpenAI. Once it's been done and everything else looks good, click save. We go in to set up the Heroka mod in Skyrim itself. This is where we say having some basic understanding of Skyrim modern is important. You're gonna need to download the requirements for the Haraka mod. If you go down to the bottom of the mod page, you should see some more detailed requirements as well as the recommended load order for the requirements. Once you have that all set up, you simply just need to download the Heraka AI mod and install it with your mod manager of choice. In this case, I'm using Mod Organizer 2, and I would also recommend to put this towards the bottom of your load order and your plugin order. There's one configuration we need to do within the Haraka AI mod itself. So open it up, go to SKSE, plugins, and open up the simple gatewayer.ini file. You then want to make changes to your .ini file to reflect what is shown in the Drema distro command window. Mainly you're just changing the server IP address to your actual server IP address. With all the mods installed, we're ready to start up the game. So make sure that the Cobalt CPP server is running as well as the Haraka server, otherwise the mod is not going to work. Then you just need to start up the game. Once you get to the main menu, you don't need to start a new game for Haraka to function. You can use any save you want. So just load up your save game. Now navigate over to right run, open up the mod configuration menu, and select the SPG mod. You're gonna just set up some basic hotkeys here, such as a hotkey for chatting with Haraka of text, the record voice hotkey, as well as the change backend model hotkey. Yen, exit out the mod configuration menu and click the hotkey you set for change backend model. In the top left corner of the screen, you should see it the model has been changed over to Cobalt CPP. Now you just need to walk down the road past War Maidens and Haraka to be off to your right. If you approach her, you can ask you. her to follow you. I'm Once right she's following you, 
you can then ask her an actual question. Hello, Herica. How are you? Oh, hi there. I hope everything is going well with you. How can I help you today? Is there a particular topic you would like to discuss? Or just a general chat? Whatever it may be, I'm here to listen and assist as best as I can. Just let me know. Thank you. If you get a response, then well done. You now have a fully functional AI companion which works entirely off your own hardware. Pretty cool, huh? And that's how you get the offline version of Herica working. As you can see, even by skipping over some of the more technical stuff, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts involved to getting this mod working. This is why we consider you see advanced installation guide. However, if you are curious, you can definitely go back and start playing around and configuring some of these options because you can get pretty technical with how you want Haruka's characterization to be. I would highly recommend for you to join our Discord, which is quite active, as we have a lot of users here you are doing some rather advanced configurations with Herica and can help you get on the right track of actually getting these offline AI services working. As it's not just these services which are available, there's a whole heap of other services which you can plug into Herica to get her work into your specific liking. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video useful and I hope you have fun with the Herica mod. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and just take it easy.